All right, welcome everybody to CLT Math Crash Course. This is day two. Um, I recorded day one, uh, the day one session of the course, long ago. I had planned on on finishing out the course. Uh, other things happened, <laughs> and uh, it took a while for me to finish this. But we are attacking this right now, um, and we are going to uh, we're going to go through all of the major concepts that are covered on the CLT. Uh, and do everything we can to get you a good score increase on the CLT math section in the shortest amount of time possible. So that's what we're doing here. In the day one section of the course, um, I covered sort of like a general overview of the questions um, with a lot of different kind of strategies and question types. On the day uh, two section of the course that we're working on today, I'm going to focus in on by far the most useful and powerful strategy that I can teach you on the CLT, and that's plugging in values in place of the variables. It applies to maybe you know, close to a quarter of the questions on the CLT, so we're really going to kind of narrow our focus today, focus on that strategy. We have uh, a new student with us. Karis is with us today. So hi, say hi to everybody, Karis. Hello. All right. Thank you so much, Karis. Appreciate it. And uh, before we jump into the questions, I actually want to review my rules for CLT math. So go ahead and uh, have that open, if you will, Karis. I'm going to bring it up here on my end as well. And uh, I would love it if you would read my first rule for CLT math, loud and proud, please, for everybody to hear. Okay, just number one? Just number one, yep. Okay. Avoid complex math operations whenever possible. Instead, plug in values in place of the variables to solve. Excellent, thank you. And uh, we, we touched on that a little bit on the day one section of the course. And uh, um, so you've seen that before, but uh, today we're going to really focus in on that strategy. It's just so useful and pops up so much on the CLT. So let's jump into those questions. I've got a question up here on the whiteboard. Uh, go ahead and read question number 88. Uh, all of these questions are from the official CLT uh, practice tests, by the way. So these are the kinds of questions I would expect you to see on the CLT. So go ahead and read uh, question number 88 for us, please. Okay. If W is an even integer, then which of the following is odd? Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay. Uh, Karis, do you know what an integer is? Have you heard that term before? I have, yes, yeah. but I'm not sure I could define it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's helpful to know. I mean, in short, the, the answer is it's like a whole number, basically. Okay. In fact, I do have this on uh, on the CLT study guide. So actually, go ahead and, and open that up again and scroll down to the glossary on the CLT study guide. Um, if there's a word that's unfamiliar as you're working your way through uh, these practice questions, hopefully I've got it and all likely I've got it defined here in the glossary. I'm kind of building this out still as we... Um, as we work our way through the course, but I do have this term in here. It's the first bullet point. Can you go ahead and read the definition of an integer, please? Yeah. Um, whole numbers, both positive and negative, and zero. All right, and then I've got some examples there, so that would include negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, et cetera. It's basically a whole number. You know, that that's that kind of that kind of works. That's an integer. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. And we kind of need that definition here, that understanding for this um for this question. Now, I'm guessing you know what an even number is, right? Or an even integer, right? Yes. That's not too bad. Most students are familiar with that. You know, two, four, six, eight, et cetera. So um, we've got to find out which of the following answer choices are odd, right? Does that make sense, this question? Yes, it does. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so this question is perfect for this whole plugging in values in place of the variable strategy. It's perfect for it, okay? We're going to create a value for W. Can you give me, Karis, can you give me a value for W? Just any number? Well, it's got to be an even integer. And as long as it's an even integer, okay. we're good. So give me an even integer. Uh, four. We could do four. That would totally work here. But I'm looking at some of the answer choices, like W is raised to the power of three in answer choice B, and W is raised to the power of five in answer choice C. Do you see that there? Yeah. And I don't really want to deal with four raised to the power of five. I mean, we could figure it out. It's, you know, it's, it's not too bad. But in general, when you're plugging in values, you want to start with smaller values. It's just going to make your life easier. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, four would work. We could do it. But let's pick something smaller. Can you think of a smaller, even integer? All right, let's go with two. Let's go with two. Why not? Why not? Now, again, if you're, if you're plugging in values and two doesn't help you find the right answer, or if you get, like, two true statements from plugging in a two, then we can, you know, talk about adding another number, like, you know, plugging in a larger number, like four. But let's start with two. It makes sense to do that. Okay. All right, so, uh, all right, so which of the following is odd? So all we've got to do now is just plug in this value in place of the variable W into the answer choices. Let's start plugging into answer choice A. Can I see you do that on the whiteboard? Plug in a two for W and let's calculate it. Okay. Looking good, looking good. 
All right. So that's just 25 times 2. What's 25 times 2, Karis? 50. 50. Is that odd? Nope. No, it is not. So it can't be answer choice A. Does that make sense? Yes. Beautiful. All right. Let's try answer choice uh, B. I'll clear some space and then go ahead and plug into um, plug into answer choice B for me, please. Okay. Clear some space. Okay. Uh, is that odd? <laughs> nope. No, it is not. So we can eliminate answer choice B as well. The right answer has to be odd, so it's not B. Uh, let's plug into answer choice uh, C. All right, is that uh, is that odd? Well, let's find what's what's two to the power of five. Let's start there. Oh, that's where I got a little bit stuck. Yeah. Do you know what two to the power of five means? Uh, it would be two. Five, like two times two yeah. times two times two times two. Yeah, exactly right. And I might even write that out, right? Two times two okay. times two times two times two. A lot of students get tripped up on operations with exponents because they kind of focus on, well, operations and not focusing on sort of what the notation means. But if you focus on what the notation means, you can figure it all out. Two to the power of five means two times itself five times. So we can just go one step at a time. What's two times two? Four. It's going to be four. And then... Uh, Times two again is going to give us what? Eight. Eight. Times two again is going to give us what? Sixteen. Sixteen. Times two again is going to give us what? Thirty-two. Not too bad. Okay. And again, you don't have a calculator for the CLT. So, you know, if we had a calculator, it'd be much easier to just punch it in. But here we got to actually calculate it. So uh, two to the power of five is 32. And then what's 32 minus one? 31. 31. Is that odd? Yes. Yes, it is. So we'll keep answer choice C. Okay. Notice, now, we're not going to stop here, okay? We got something that works, gives us a true statement that is odd. But when you're plugging in your own values in place of the variables, Karis, this is really important. On the CLT, you've got to test all the answer choices, always, okay? Because it's possible we could get multiple answer choices that give us a true statement, okay? So um, let's plug into answer choice D as well. I'll clear some space here on the screen. And then uh, go ahead and plug into answer choice D for me, please. Looking good. Okay. Uh, let's calculate this here. We got to think in terms of, uh, of PEMDAS a little bit. Are you, familiar, are you familiar with PEMDAS, Karis? No, I'm not. No, okay. Let's talk about PEMDAS a little bit. Um, I'm going to have a section actually on the, uh, on the study guide devoted to PEMDAS. Um, I'm going to write this out here. It's, PEMDAS is an acronym, okay? I'm guessing a lot of students uh, watching this recording are familiar with PEMDAS. PEMDAS uh, is sort of an order of operations formula. You start with the parentheses. That's the P in PEMDAS. And my handwriting is really terrible here. I'm going to try to do this. Parentheses. Next is exponents. Is this familiar at all or no? It is, yes. Okay, I just okay. hadn't heard of PEMDAS. Yeah, yeah. Uh, multiplication. Division. I'm just going to draw the division sign. There we go. Addition. And then subtraction. Okay? That's PEMDAS. So we can think in terms of PEMDAS here. There's nothing to calculate inside the parentheses. I mean, two in parentheses is just two, right? There's nothing to add or subtract or multiply there. But now we got to do the exponents. Okay? So what is being raised to the power of 2 here, Karis? 2. 2 is being raised to the power of 2, absolutely. So what's 2 to the power of 2? That's to be 4. That's 4. Okay, so we take care of that right there. Now we can take care of the multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, but we're going to do it in that order. Okay? We've got 3 times 4 plus 8. So we've got to do this multiplication first. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so what's 3 times 4? 12. It's 12. And then 12 plus 8? 20. 20. Is that an odd number? <laughs> nope. No way, Jose. It is. Uh, answer choice D is gone. We can confirm it's answer choice C. Any questions about that, Karis? I don't think so, no. Okay. Okay. 
All that is just plug in values in place of the variables that can that can get it for you. You know, if you're trying to think in sort of algebraic terms, some students might be able to get this. I'm down with anything that gets you the right answer, but this is just by far the easiest way to do this. You're guaranteed to do it. As long as you plug in a, a, an even integer for w, you're going to get this one. Any questions? Nope. OK, let me clear this and we'll put the next question up on the screen. All right. All right, go ahead and read question 109 for us, please, loud and proud. What are the solutions to the equation below? All right, and then there's that equation. Ooh, you see those funky bars in that equation? Yeah. Yeah, have you seen those before? Do you know what that means? Absolute value, absolute, right? Absolutely, yeah. I've got a section on absolute okay. value on the study guide. So I'm going to actually go to that real quick. And let's see, which concept is that? That's basic concept D. Do you see that? Yes. Absolute value. Go ahead and read that for us. I know you know what it is, but for anybody watching the recording that isn't familiar with absolute value, this will be helpful. Yeah. Go ahead and read that for us, please. Okay. Calculate what's inside the bars. If it's positive, keep it positive. If it's negative, make it positive. Excellent. And then I've got an example there. You see that there, right? And the absolute value of 3 minus 5 is 2. Okay. What's 3 minus 5, by the way? That would be negative 2. Negative 2, right? But then, because that's negative... You know, we've got to turn, and it's inside the absolute value bars, we've got to turn that positive. So negative 2 becomes, the absolute value of negative 2 becomes positive 2. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. So we've got to deal with that here in this question number 109. So, um, all right. I don't think we need to create our own values for this, right? Because they give us values in the answer choices. Take a look at the answer choices. We see that? Yeah. We can test these. That's it. That's all we need to do here. We don't need to solve it algebraically. There's a way to do it, but it's complicated, and we don't need to do that here. So let's just plug in the values from the answer choices and see what we get. Make sense? Okay. Okay, great. So let me see you work that out. Go ahead and plug in. Um, so we'll test answer choice A. We'll start with uh, making 3x. Or making x3, I should say. Okay. Oops. Sorry about that. Oh, you're good. Oops, there we go. Excellent. Just plug in that 3 for x. Very nice. Okay, looking good. All right, let's simplify this. You know, I would start with the absolute value, the stuff inside the absolute value bars. You know, kind of deal with it like you would with parentheses. All right? So what's, uh, what's 3 minus 2? We'll start there with that. 1. 3 minus 2 is 1, right? So we get... 5 times the absolute value of 1 plus 1 equals 16. Uh, what's the absolute value of 1? <laughs> Still 1. Just 1, right? Absolutely, yeah. So that stays the same. So it's just 5 times 1, which is 5, plus 1. Do we get a true statement here? No. No way. So we can eliminate answer choice A. All right, that doesn't work. Any questions about that? Nope. Okay, great. Let's plug into um, answer choice... Uh, plug in uh, a 5 from answer choice B. All right. You got to simplify this? Start with the absolute value? Start with the absolute value, yeah. Let me see you work it out. Okay. Good. Excellent. Okay. So it's 15 plus 1, true statement? Yes. Yeah, that is a true statement. Now, we can't stop here. Do you understand why we can't stop here? Uh, because answer choice B says five only. Yes, yes. And answer choice C and D say five and something else, right? So it could be C or D as well. We don't know. we got to test them. Make sense? Okay. Okay. So we'll keep answer choice B. Do we need to test answer choice C? No, because three doesn't work. Three doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, we could have gotten rid of that right off the bat, actually, right? Three doesn't work at all. So now all we got to do is just test answer choice D. 
Okay, so let me clear some space here. Ooh, clearing. And then uh, we'll plug in a negative one here for x. And if this gives us a true statement when x is negative one, then it's gonna be d, we'll see. Looking good. Excellent. Beautiful. I love that you're going step by step here. You know, you've got time to do that on this test. Um, you do, but you're less likely to make some silly mistakes, I think, if you do go step by step like you are. So looking great. What next? Beautiful. Absolute value of negative three is definitely three. Is that going to give us a true statement? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Should I finish writing it out? Yeah, you can finish writing it out. Okay. But that works for sure. So we can confirm it's answer choice D. Any questions about that? Nope. Okay. Have you seen questions like this on the CLT before in, in your previous work? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah they like testing absolute value. And, uh, you know, again, there's an algebraic way to do it, but just plug in the values. Just turn everything into arithmetic as often as you can. And you're pretty much guaranteed to find the right answer as long as your arithmetic is, is straight. So great job there. Let's keep rolling. I'm going to bump up the level of difficulty a little bit uh, on some of these questions. Let's see. I think we've got another absolute value question here. So this adds another little element here. We've got an inequality on question 89. Karis, go ahead and read question uh, 89 for us, please. Uh, which of the following is equivalent to... And then should I read? Yeah, yeah, the, read it. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the absolute value of 3x minus 5 um, is greater than 7. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen inequalities before, Karis? I have, yeah, yes. Yeah. Some students get tripped up on inequalities a little bit. Um, an old trick that I, I, I've used in the past, it just always works. In, in case you forget what, which one's greater than or equal to, I always turn the, the inequality sign into a Pac-Man. And then I say Pac-Man wants to eat the bigger number. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. He wants yes. the bigger number. He doesn't want small, he wants the bigger number. So we know the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side. Just a stupid little trick, but strangely, those stupid little tricks uh, help me. And I'm guessing some other students watching this. Most of you are probably familiar with that already. All right, um, how can we plug in values for the variables here to solve this? Um, some of them are the same, but... Yeah. yeah. Let's just go down the line. Yeah. I mean, we start with the answer choice A. Okay. Right? I mean, X is 4. Let's see if X is 4. See if that's equivalent to the expression in the question. Plug it in. I'm going to make this really clear. This is an absolute value bar right here. It can be a little tricky okay. to deal with parentheses or dealing with like ones and stuff like that. So I like to make my absolute value uh, bars like absurdly long. So, okay. Um, so we've got uh, some stuff inside the absolute value bars. I would probably just do the multiplication here first, right? That three times four. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're kind of doing PEMDAS here, right? We're doing the multiplication before we do this subtraction. All right, what's that give us? Okay. So we've got the absolute value of seven is greater than seven. You know what the absolute value of seven though, right? That's just seven. So is that a true statement? No. No, it is not, right? If it said equal to, maybe we'd keep it, okay? But the absolute value of 7, which is 7, is just not greater than 7, so answer choice A is gone. Any questions about that? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. okay, good. Let's look at answer choice B. Now, this is a little bit trickier, maybe, okay? Because they don't give us a specific value to plug in here, right? We know X is either greater than 4 or it's less than negative 2 thirds, right? But 
We can't plug in a four and we can't plug in negative two thirds, right? We've got to plug in something greater than four here. So I just, I say, just pick the next, like the, the next closest whole number that we can plug in here to test answer choice B. Does that make sense? Okay. So five. Let's plug in five. Yeah. I mean, you could do okay. six or seven. You'd have to get true statements if answer choice B is right, but, but I say pick the closest one. And again, you want to do with smaller values in general. So plug in a five. Let's see what happens. Looking good, looking good. Excellent. Okay, we can stop there. You know the absolute value of 10 is 10. Is that a true statement? Yes. Yeah, that's a true statement. Okay. Okay. I don't think we can stop there, though. we got to test the next <clears throat> set of values here in answer choice B, right? We've got a, it says X is less than negative two thirds. You see that? Okay. So what are we going to plug in for X here to test that second half of answer choice B? Uh... Negative one. Negative one. Absolutely. Does it make sense why negative one is less than negative two thirds? Yes. Yeah. Right. Like, and that even smaller than negative one is negative two and negative three is even smaller than negative two and negative a million is really, really small, right? Sort of the bigger, the absolute value of a negative number, the smaller it is. So yeah, plug in, uh, plug in a negative one for X. Let's see what happens. What's the absolute value of negative eight? Eight. Eight? Eight greater than seven? Yes, it is. Absolutely. So it looks like answer choice B works. Okay. Looks like it works. We could possibly stop here. We could possibly stop here. I just want to make sure that this is this is what works. I want to make sure. So let's go ahead and test, because uh, we're not, again, we're not creating values of our own exactly, uh, we kind of are. Yeah, I, I think it's wise to probably test the other answer choices. So let's try uh, to test answer choice C, kind of thinking in the same terms, like pick the next closest value. Um, I don't want to plug in, you, know, you can't plug in two thirds for answer choice C, right? But what can we plug in to test the first half of answer choice C? Uh, one. We plug in a one, right? Absolutely. Let's see if we get a true statement. Excellent. It's not looking too promising there, is it? Nope. No, it's not. It's not. All right. Is that going to give us a true statement, Karis? No, it's no, not. Definitely not. Right. Absolute value of negative two, of course, is two, but that's still less than seven, not greater than seven. We can get rid of answer choice C. Um, what about answer choice uh, D? Do we do we even need to plug in to answer choice D here? Um. It uh, doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it. And here's why. We plugged in a one for X and we didn't get a true statement. But look at answer choice D. One for X would have to be true oh. if D were correct, right? Because one is greater than negative two thirds, but less than four. Does that make sense? We've already kind of tested yeah. it because we plugged in one. I mean, if we wanted to plug in a zero, you know, or another, we could. Right, zero would sort of satisfy the requirements for answer choice D, but zero is not going to work either. I can tell you that right now, right? So by testing the one that we did for answer choice C, we can also eliminate D. Does that make sense, Karis? Yes, it does. Okay, good, good. So we, I think we can get rid of it without going through all those steps. 
Any questions about that? No, I don't think so. Okay, and we can confirm that's answer choice B. All right. These are pretty common questions on the CLT questions like this style. But again, the algebra gets just, that's tricky and annoying. Just plug in the values. You can figure it out. Okay. All right. Let's do the next question. We've got some more inequalities. All right. Go and read uh, question number 82 for us, please. Which of the following could not be a value of x if the absolute value of 2x minus 1 is less than 10? Mm. This is a little bit different. I mean, it looks similar to some of the previous questions. But look at the wording of the question. Which of the following could not be a value of x? Does it make sense what we're solving for here, Karis? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're looking for the answer choice that can't be a value of x, which means when we plug in these values, we're going to plug them in, we're going to get three true statements if we plug them all in. And there's going to be one that doesn't work. We want the one that doesn't work. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. A common mistake I see students... Uh, make on tests like this, especially if they're doing the algebra, like they'll solve for X and then, then when they find X, then they just kind of pick that. But the question is saying, which is not a value of X? So we got to find the one that doesn't work. So let's find it. Go ahead and start with answer choice A. We'll plug in negative five. We'll see if it works or not. And if it doesn't work, we'll probably go with it as our answer. Good. Love that you're doing the PEMDAS here, right? You're doing the multiplication there inside the absolute value signs before you do the subtraction. It's perfect. What's the absolute value of negative 11? 11. It's 11. Is 11 less than 10? No. No, it's not. I think we found our answer. Okay. See, my brain was looking at it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, are you, how are you looking at it? You... See, in my, in my brain, I was like, well, that's, it doesn't work, so that's not the right answer. Ah, got you. Yeah, that's tricky, right? That can be tricky. Yeah. And this is where like, you can't lose sight of the question. You can't lose sight of the question. It's a good investment of time on this test to read the question very carefully. Read it slowly. Reread it if you need to. Reread it if you need to. Because maybe some students will like, they'll plug in the negative five for A, see that it doesn't work, and they'll move on to the next one. I'm guessing one half works. I know it does. And they'll be like, oh, that works. Okay. And then they pick B, right? You can see how easily that would happen. But as long as you sort of laser focus on the thing you're solving for, right? Looking for the one that's not a value of X then you'll be okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, good. Good. Always a good investment of the time to read the question or reread the question if you need to. So A doesn't work, so it's A. <laughs> Any questions about that? Uh, would you go ahead and test the rest of the answers or no? You know, uh, I mean, doing untimed work, like if you're just practicing on your own, yeah, absolutely, right? You just get, you know, continue practice with dealing with inequalities and absolute value and just practicing the arithmetic and order of operations. Yeah, in untimed work, absolutely, we could do that. On a timed test, however, it's probably not a good investment of time to do that. This test is tough. They don't give you a whole lot of time. They just don't. It's like you have just a little more than a minute per question, you know? So if, if you, you know, and here we're not plugging in our own values. Do you see that, Karis? Right? Yes. We're not like creating a value for X of our own and then testing things. If you're doing that, yes, always test all the answer choices, always. But here, you know, if answer choice A works, or I should say if answer choice A <laughs> answers the question, the others don't. The others don't. So on a time test, I would stop here. Make sense? Yes. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Great question. Great question. Yeah. There's that whole strategy element. We'll talk about that sort of later in the course about how to deal with a timed element and how to practice timed work. Um, but, uh, but when you're, when you're doing this untimed, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe test them all, test them all, just get the practice in yeah. untimed work.
Time test? No way. Move on. All right. That's good enough for me right now. Let's move on to the next question. Let's see. I think we're on this one. Yep. All right, go ahead and read question 105 for us, please. If negative 3x plus 7 is less than 16, which of the following must be true? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. You understand what we're solving for here? I think so. Yeah. I've seen a lot of little Pac-Men. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. Uh, all right, so we, we can test these, right? We can test these. Let's start with answer choice A, okay? Now, we can't plug in a negative 3 for x. I wouldn't do that. What are we going to have to plug in for X to test answer choice A? Something greater than. Something, so. yes, yes. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, right? Give me the next closest value that's greater than negative 3. Negative 2? Negative 2, yes, yes. The temptation here, and even now, and I've done this question multiple times, the temptation is like, oh, uh, I'll make it negative 4, right? But you can't do that. You can't make X negative 4 to test answer choice A. Negative 4 is less than. Negative three. Does that make sense, Karis? Yes. The next closest value that gives us a true statement would be negative two. Negative two is greater than negative three. So let's plug in negative two and see what happens. Good, looking good. All right. Is that a true statement? Yes, it, it is. is. It is. So we'll keep answer choice A. We will. But I think we have to test the others here because it's possible some others might work. Okay. So let me clear some space here and we'll test answer choice B. Let's look at answer choice B. Okay. Answer choice B says X is less than negative four. So what are we going to plug into test answer choice B? So here's where we could use negative four. Here, exactly. Here's where we can. Absolutely. Right. It's, it's tricky here, right? Keeping all these things. I think that's the toughest part of this question, right? Is realizing what's greater than or less than with negative numbers, right? Students get thrown off all the time. Just take your time. You can figure it out, right? Negative four works here for X. So let's plug in a negative four to test answer choice B. Let me see you do that. True statement? No, it's not. No, it's not. So answer choice B is gone. Let's try answer choice C. What are we going to plug in uh, for answer choice C? It says X is mm. less than negative 9. Negative 10. Yeah, let's plug in negative 10. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it's going to work, but let's test it. I'm going to stop you real quick. On, on a timed test, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would probably stop here at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not looking good. You know what negative 3 times negative 10 is going to be. Right? Yeah, 30. Yeah, it's going to be 30. There's no way that left-hand side is going to be less than 16. There's no way. That okay. We, we can stop there. I mean, if you want to carry it all out, just to be extra cautious, certainly in your untimed work you can, but on a timed test, I'd probably stop there. I'd probably stop there. C's not going to work. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Get rid of it. Let's try uh, D. What are we going to plug in uh, to test uh, D? Negative 8? Yeah, we could do negative 8. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. 
So negative 8 is greater than negative 9. Okay, I think we can stop again here, right? Because you know what negative 3 times negative 8 is. 24. Yeah, it's going to be positive 24. So there's no way that's left-hand side is going to be less than 16. So we can get rid of D as well. That's okay. Confirm answer choice A. Any questions about that? Nope. No? Okay. Okay. Yeah, here I would still, especially with inequalities, I would always test all the answer choices. I, I, I would on, on an inequality question. Because if they gave you another answer choice that said, like, X is greater than 2, right? You'd probably you'd get a true statement if X is greater than 2. Right? You get a true statement. My brain's trying to keep up with that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. If X is, let's say you had an answer choice that said X is greater than 2. And so you plugged in a 3 for X. Right? Let me show you. Okay. Check it out. You get a true statement. You get negative 3 times 3 plus 7 is less than 16. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 plus 7. So you get negative 2 is less than 16. It's a true statement. Do you see that? Yes. It's a true statement. It's a true statement. So how would you decide between, you know, answer choice A and then this other answer choice that I just made up, I'll call it answer choice E. How do you decide between them? You know, I have no idea. Yeah, right? That's tough. That's tough. Well, be, we know it's got to be A because if negative 2 worked, right, which it did. Remember we plugged in a negative 2 to test answer choice A? Take a look at that. Okay, yeah. Right? If answer choice, if negative 2 worked for answer choice A, and it does, negative 2 isn't included in the solution for answer choice E that I made up. Do you see that? Yes. Negative 2 isn't included. So the better answer would be answer choice A. The reason I bring this up, it's possible when you're plugging in values on inequalities questions, you'll get multiple true statements. It's a very good point. You will. You will. So you got to kind of test them all and work your way through them in case you do get multiple true statements. We didn't get them here, right? Only answer choice A worked. That's fine. But on some other questions, we might see some where you could get multiple true statements. So you got to test them all. Does that make some sense? Okay. Yeah. And is that where the wording comes in? Like, which must be true? Yes, absolutely. I love that you pointed that out. Thank you so much. Which must be true. Not which can be true, right? It has to be true. It has to be true. Absolutely. Great point. Great point. Any questions? Uh, no, I don't think okay. so. Awesome. All right. Go ahead and read uh, question 116 for us, please. Which of the following is always true for the integers w and z if w is greater than z and z is negative? Ooh. What are we solving for here, Karis? What are we solving for? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, W? <laughs> I mean, it's a really specific question. Really specific question. Which is always true, right? Not which can be true, which is always true. It's just like that other question where it said, which must be true, right? Okay. For some integers, W and Z. Okay. If W is greater than Z, and Z is negative. Okay. Okay. It's tough to wrap your head around, especially because we're dealing with variables here in the question. Okay. But we're going to use that strategy of plugging in values in place of the variables. I think we're going to be able to figure this out. I think we are. So let's come up with some values for W and Z. Okay. Give me a value for W. Um, three. We can do three. And give me a value for Z. Negative one. Negative one. I think that'll work. All right. And that's good, right? Because here, this, this satisfies the requirements of the question. Right? You got to make sure when you're plugging values, you can't just pick anything random here. You got to work within the limits of the question. W here is greater than Z, and Z is negative. I think we're good. Okay? I think we're good. So let's test these answer choices. Plug these into, uh, we'll start with answer choice A. 
If it's true, we'll keep it. I think we're going to have to test them all here, though. Let's start with Anne's Choice A. Let's see what happens. So that is a uh, three to the power of two right here, right? Yeah, I misread that. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So that would be nine. Yeah. There we go. Okay, true statement? Yes. All right, we'll keep it. Let's plug into answer choice B. I'll clear some space for you. good three plus one is four looking good and then negative one to the power of three is that gonna be positive or negative we're just going over this negative definitely being negative you know what it is negative one negative one absolutely true statement yes also a true statement so keep it right that's why we can't just stop when answer choice a worked right when we're plugging in values of our own we got to test them all let's try answer choice b or uh, answer choice c Okay. True statement? Yes. Yeah. Also true statement. Err. Also true statement. Let's try answer choice D. True statement? No. No, we can finally get rid of one of them. Thank goodness. Oh my gosh. Okay. D doesn't work. <sighs> what do we do now? Right? We've got three that give us a true statement for that set of values. Well, plug in another set of values. Plug in another set of values. Okay. Can I offer a suggestion here? Yes. Let's plug in. I'm, I'm just a big fan of small values. <laughs> in general. But when you're kind of squaring stuff or raising stuff to the power of three, ones can be tricky, right? The ones aren't going to help you differentiate between like one to the power of two and one to the power of three. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I like when I see stuff being squared or raised to the power of three or raised to the power of four, sometimes I like plugging in twos. Okay. It's going to help us differentiate things. So I want to make W two. And we're, uh, sorry, we're, and we're going to make, um, I just realized I had two W's here. That was silly. Uh, and then we're going to make Z equal negative two. Okay. Z is negative. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Okay. I think this is going to help us differentiate between them. Okay. So let's try um, plugging those values into answer choice A. Good, looking good. All right, true statement? No, it's not. No, it is not. So answer choice A is gone. All right, we got two of them gone. All right, we're going to get this. Uh, let's plug into answer choice B. statement yes yes it is okay keep it keep it let's plug into answer choice c true 
True statement? No, it's not. No, it is not. Those are equal. So, yay. I think we got it. And it's choice B. Any questions about that, Karis? Uh, just to confirm, so when it says always true, it'll be true for any set of variables that meet the requirements. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Be, be really careful with that language. And this is the tricky part about plugging in values for variables, right? Is you may get, when you're creating your own values, you're going to get multiple answer choices that give you a true statement sometimes for the values you picked. It'll happen. Okay. But again, just test another set of values. And if like when, when answer choice D didn't work for the first set of values that we picked, you know what I'm saying? We don't have to test D again. We don't have to. It's got to work for all the values. Does that okay. make sense? Yes. Once it doesn't work for one set of values, it's gone. It's gone. Okay. All right. Let me see. Let's do this. Let's actually, let's take a break. Let's take a quick break. Are you cool with that, Karis? Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Let's take a quick break. Um, we are going to come back to, uh, we'll come back here in just a few minutes. But yeah, go ahead and take a few minutes to use the restroom. Uh, I'm going to as well and drink some more coffee. And, uh, and we'll come back and keep working on the strategy, plug in values for the variables. Okay? Okay. Awesome. I'll see you in just a few minutes. All right? Okay. All right. Thanks, Karis. Bye.